The only real hope and change you'll ever get is from God. It's going to come from the Lord or it's not going to come at all. It's going to come when you admit that you can't do it and that you've got to have His help. Now Jesus described the last days of this world as we know it, just as in the days of Noah. And it was at a time when the scripture says that people's hearts were just continuously evil. Their thoughts were evil, very much like what I feel is starting to happen in greater measure, almost like a moral landslide in our generation. Baptism of filth is coming through the airwaves on this generation. People are losing their sense and understanding. Decency is falling into the streets. Shame is almost nowhere to be found anymore. Everything is relevant, nothing is right, and nothing is wrong. This is the day that Noah found himself in. And suddenly, God appears to this man and says, I want you to build an ark, a boat, quite a large boat. And he says, I want you to make it a certain way, and I want you to dedicate your life to the building of this vessel, because I'm about to judge the known world. God is love, but he cannot let sin. Sin can only go to a certain point, and it must be judged. Judgment time had come, and he called Noah to build a boat. And the Bible says in the New Testament, in the book of 2 Peter, that Noah was a preacher of righteousness. So I want you to travel back with me in time, because Jesus said that our day is going to be like the day of Noah. And now here's a man who's building a boat in a place where it never rained. And it's a huge boat. It requires a lot of work, it's, it's, it's labor intensive, it's on visible display, and he's also preaching while he's building this. It's something that nobody else almost is building except for his own family. And you and I can envision people passing by this, this boat that this man is building, and he's telling people, God is about to judge the world, but he has provided a way of safety. For those who will hear him, for those who will listen to his voice, he has provided a, an ark as it is of safety that you can get into. And even though this world is about to be judged, you can be lifted above the judgment and you can actually survive the judgment. Just as in the days of Noah, Jesus said, I can see people, be, I can see in my mind's eye people passing by. You see, people are laughing at him. And if, if, if I join this cause as it is, people are going to laugh at me. And I'm not really up to being laughed at. You know, the fear of man, the Bible says, is a snare. The fear of what people think. The fear of enduring the ridicule, ridicule and the scorn, perhaps, of a fallen society. Or people who are living apart from God. And many people just, they agree, but they just can't make that step. And others, it says in verse 38, it says, As in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage. Now, now, none of these things are wrong in themselves, of course. We have to eat and drink and marry and give in marriage. But the, the, the concept is, I just want to enjoy a bit of what life has to offer. And others passing by were just outright mockers. Verse 39 says, They didn't know until the flood came and took them all away. And so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. Genesis chapter 7 tells us, in the day that the rain started, in the self-same day, the scripture says, God, Noah, and his family, and everything he had prepared for went into the ark, and it says, God shut them in the day the rain started. Now, how sad it must have been for Noah to hear those voices from the other side of a closed door. I want you to think about it for a moment, as Noah is inside the ark, and it's not that God is unjust, folks. The invitation was there for dozens of years. But the invitation was turned down for various reasons. It was rejected for things that even looked good. And then suddenly from within the ark, Noah is, is hearing these pleas. There had to be people arriving. The mockers suddenly weren't mocking anymore. The, the people who thought that this life had something better than what God was offering them were banging on the outside of the door, finally realizing that it was all going to be underwater in just a moment of time. Others that were afraid because society was going to laugh at them were no longer afraid anymore. And they were knocking on the door and trying to get in, but the door was closed. And the scripture tells us in chapter 25, the kingdom of heaven, he said, is like those who went forth to meet the bridegroom. And there, was, there were those who simply had no oil. They had no relationship. They had no light. They had no ability to see. They couldn't find their way as it is into life. And they went to those who had oil and they said, give us of your oil. And those who had oil told them, no, we can't. You've got to go and get it for yourself. 
You have to have a living relationship with God. You, it, this is not a formula, folks. This is a relationship. This is something where we give our lives to God. We acknowledge that God became a man, went to a cross, paid the price for our sins, opened wide his arms to those who would come to him and invited us into this ark of safety, which is his own life. It was his own sacrifice on the cross, invited us into eternal life. It's not a formula. I can't lay hands on you for to get this thing. I can't impart it to you because it's not mine to give. You have to get it for yourself. Running to church in a dead calamity won't do a thing for you. Church can't do anything for you. It's a living relationship with God through His Son, Jesus Christ. And the scripture says, well, they went to buy. The bridegroom came and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage and the door was shut. And afterwards the others came saying, Lord, open to us. But he said, I'm sorry. I don't know who you are. Folks, it's a dangerous thing to hear the gospel and to put it away from you. It's the worst decision you can make in your entire life. And I say it to you with a loving heart. As much as I know how, how tragic it will be. I want you to think for a moment that if Christ did come tomorrow and you were among those who found yourself outside of the kingdom of God, what will make hell really hell is the memory of my voice tonight. The invitation that was given to you to come into the safety that God offers through Jesus Christ. But for some reason that was just about to pass away, it was all going to come to nothing anyway. You rejected the greatest decision, the greatest life, the greatest offer of love and forgiveness that could ever have come your way through all of time or eternity. And you sold it off for a little bit of relationship, a little bit of, of, of a sense of what you think your life should be, a little bit of laughter, a little bit of fear of man, you sold it off. The greatest opportunity, the greatest life that has ever been given. Because as I said earlier, it's not a formula. And God is not a light switch that you just flip on and off at your convenience. When the offer comes and your heart is warmed. Listen, we're talking about eternity now in heaven. We're talking about being saved from being separated from God for all of eternity. And whatever that is going to mean, the depths of it, our minds can't even begin to understand. We're talking about being redeemed from being separated from the God who created you in his image and is destined for you and I to live with him for all of eternity. We're talking about putting that day away and how sad that day is going to be, how heartbreaking it will be for some to be knocking on a door and you can't find your way in. Verse 40 says, two will be in the field. One is taken, the other is left. Two are grinding at the mill. One is taken and the other is left. One has already been received. One has already accepted the offer. One is already moving by the voice of God into that place of safety and the other is left. Watch therefore. He says, you don't know the hour your Lord is going to come, but know this. If you would have known in what time the thief would come, you would not have let your house be broken into. You would not have worked your whole life for things that you can't keep. You would not have spent your time on that which is not eternal, but you would have given your life to Jesus Christ. I don't know how I can convey more to you the urgency of the hour that we are living in. You and I don't have, you don't have forever to make this decision. What must I do, you say, to get into the ark? Admit that you are a sinner. Admit that you have sinned against a holy God. Admit that your life is not what it should be. And admit that you need a savior. And recognize that God in his love came to the earth in the form of a man. His name was Jesus Christ. And he came here because he loved you. He came here because he wanted you. He came here because he was impassioned about getting you back to himself again. And because of that, he endured people spitting in his face and slapping him and beating him so he could get you back again. And he went to a cross and he died and shed every last drop of blood to pay the price for every wrong thing that you and I have ever done. And he says, all you have to do is open your heart and invite him to come in to be your savior and your Lord. You receive the forgiveness that he offers and you give the rest of your life to him. And when it's all over, it's only beginning forever to be in the presence of God. There's an old saying that says, he is no fool who gives up what he cannot keep to get hold of what he can never lose. You are no fool, sir, to give up your fear of man, to give up your own plans, and to give up all of your thoughts of what life should be, to lay hold of what God says life is and where eternity is found. I challenge you with everything in my heart that you would surrender your life to Jesus Christ, that you would accept this offer of eternal life. And finally, the flood shows us the magnitude of God's grace. 
kill everybody. And we see his grace? Yes, we see his grace. Listen, they didn't have to be an ark. Noah, Shem, Ham, Japheth, and their wives do not get on the ark because they deserved it. They got on the ark because of God's grace, because he was going to keep his word. He's going to keep his promise that he made in Genesis 3.15. That is why these weren't random people who got on the ark, but people who were in the direct lineage of the promised seed who has to come to crush the head of the snake. He could have been like an artist who says, I don't like this painting. Paint over the entire thing. I don't want any remnant of it left. I don't want any reminder of this horrible painting left. But that's not what God did. God made a promise. God kept his promise. God says to Noah and to Shem and to Ham and to Japheth, you are going to get on the boat. You are going to survive. And the promised seed is going to come. Here we see the magnitude of God's grace. We see Noah, the herald of righteousness. Genesis chapter 6 verse 9. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a righteous man, blameless in his generation. Noah walked with God. And Noah had three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. He was a righteous man, blameless in his generation. Why? Because he didn't, he didn't have original sin? Of course he had original sin. Noah was a righteous man by the grace of God. Just like any other righteous man is a righteous man by the grace of God. Noah needs a savior and he is saved in the ark. But here's what's interesting, that Noah is a picture of the grace of God as well. Over a hundred years of building the ark, what is he doing? He's preaching repentance. He's inviting sinners to come. The sheer size of the ark, he's a picture of the grace of God. Preaching repentance before the judgment comes. This is a picture of Christ, who is a herald of righteousness. His coming was promised, and he came. He lived a perfect life. His righteousness was not like Noah's righteousness. He was actually righteous because he was not born of ordinary generation. He did not have original sin. His public death and resurrection, announcing the judgment and wrath of God poured out on another so that we might be saved. And the published witness that we have in the word of God, the church is another herald of righteousness. Nearly 2,000 years of public witness and warning as the ark is being built to save all of those who would come by repentance and faith. Not only does God provide a witness, but he always saves a remnant. In the flood, he saves Noah and his sons. At Sodom, the second time he does something like this, he saves righteous Lot. The Passover, the third time he does something like this, he saves Israel. In Israel's judgment, he always saves a remnant. And in the age to come, God will save a people for his own pleasure. Folks, there's another ark being built and there's another judgment coming. Here's why you need to understand the magnitude of sin. Here's why you need to understand the magnitude of God's wrath. Because there are some of us who have not gotten onto the ark because you believe that the flood is only for fantastic sinners. No, it's for you and it's for me. And the judgment of God will fall again and the flood will look like a local flood in light of the judgment that is to come when all of humanity once again is judged by Almighty God. When the final judgment comes, when men and angels are judged, when Christ returns, not as the Lamb of God to die for sin, but as the Lion of the tribe of Judah, who comes back to judge sin and to set all things right, everything will be set right. And unless you understand the magnitude of your own sin, unless you understand the magnitude of God's wrath, you do not understand the magnitude of God's grace and your need to get on the ark. Luke chapter 17, 26 to 30, Jesus says, Just as, as it was in the days of Noah, so will it be in the days of the Son of Man. They were eating and drinking and marrying and being given in marriage until the day when Noah entered the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. Likewise, just as it was in the days of Lot, they were eating and drinking, buying and selling, planting and building. 
But on the day when Lot went out from Sodom, fire and sulfur rained from heaven and destroyed them all. So will it be on the day when the Son of Man is revealed. There's another ark being built. There's another judgment coming. Noah preached. People heard and they didn't get on the ark. Can you imagine the sound? Can you imagine how many people were beating on the outside of the ark? We believe you now. We believe you now. Open the door and let us in. We believe you now. But on that awesome and terrible day, it was too late. Have you heard? Have you heard the message of Noah? Have you heard the message of Lot? Have you heard the message of Jesus? Have you heard the message of the church? This time will last forever. He said, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place, I will return. He says he'll return and he'll receive us and he'll take us so that where he is, we may be also. He's building an ark and it won't take forever. The doors will close. The judgment will come. And in that moment, it will be too late. Oh, sir, in the day you hear his voice, do not harden your heart. Oh, you who think you're righteous just because someone is worse than you in your opinion. Do not ignore the warnings. Oh, you who think that it's been so long that the judgment can't come again. Don't you dare fall asleep. Don't you dare. Because the fact of the matter is, you could close your eyes today for the last time. And today could be that day for you. Are you prepared? Are you on board? Are you safe? Nearly 2,000 years ago, Roman soldiers took nails and wood and they built a cross. And then they took nails and wood and they nailed Christ to the cross that they had built. Christ took those nails and took that wood and he built an ark. And all who climb on board will in the last days perilous times shall come for men shall be lovers of their own selves covetous boasters proud blasphemers it takes the grace of God to change us folks how can you be saved if you're not willing to repent and the Lord Jesus Christ said except you repent you shall all likewise perish